river, but now maybe briefly you can write advantages of the optical optical river mira galvano meter optical river mira galvano meter so what would you think would be the advantage of using the optical river galvano meter in determining current over maybe any other method so number one is it's more sensitive the more sensitive sensitive in it measuring it current and then and then number two it has another advantage is that that less energy is required no energy actually no energy is required to move the pointer which is just a beam of light, a ray of light. Which is weightless. So, those two can actually act as our advantages of using the optical lever in determining it current. It is more sensitive in measuring it current. It can even it can even measure small values of current that we talked about. It measures current in values of milli. That is a very small current that if you use other instruments, some of them you realize that they don't even detect anything. But this one has easily detected by the fact that even the angle of rotation is double. That means that we are magnifying it. Therefore, it has a very high sensitivity of measuring current. That is one. And then I think that there is no energy required or energy wastage wasted in the moving the pointer. Because we are looking at the pointer. It's just a ray of light. Okay? The ray of light is what we are calling the optical what? The optical pointer that is just a ray of light that will be moving. And no light is just weightless if you are looking at it as a ray. Therefore, there is no energy required in moving the pointer. Unlike in the like ammeter where some energy is wasted in moving the pointer. Is that okay? So these two are the advantages of optical lever galvanometer. So having looked at that, let's look at some other new thing that is the formation. We can look at it. Images in a plane mirror. Formation of images in plane mirrors. And then we can say, how are images formed in a plane mirror? We can say, consider array of light from an object or placed in front of a plane mirror forming the virtual virtual image at I 
as shown in below. So we are looking at, supposing we have a plane mirror, supposing I have a plane mirror as this, this is my plane mirror, and now I have an object here, light, this is object O, light rays will come, reflected around the same pass, forming that, and then the other will come here, and then reflected in your eye here. So this one here, we appear, will appear to be coming from there. Is that okay? So if this is my normal, and uh, this will be very true that this one comes reflected, this will be angle I, this one will be angle R. So my image will be formed here as I. So if this is O, this can be M. Is that okay? That can be my M. That is my drawing for the formation of the image in a plane. Matter that if I have an object O, light rays, we know that for light, for an image to be formed, at least it should have two rays. So one will be the one that is incident and reflected along with the same pass, see to be coming from here. And then this one is incident and then reflected from here, see to be coming here. Where the two intersects, our image is formed and it is virtual by the fact that we are adopting it. So, if I call this angle here alpha, and then I can call this angle here beta. Is that okay? I can call that angle there angle beta. So it is very true that it, from the diagram, from the diagram, angle I is equal to angle R. Who can tell us why this angle is the same as that angle? It is because of law of the laws of reflection that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Is that okay? So I can also still say that the angle alpha is equal to also angle R, isn't it? This angle is equal to this angle here. Which reason can we give there? These are alternating, these are alternating angles. Is that okay? And then finally, we can also say that, we can also say that angle R, angle, angle beta is equal to angle R. This angle here is equal to this angle here. Why are we saying that? These are corresponding here, corresponding angles, all at the same point. Is that okay? From, from our diagram there, we are saying that uh, this angle is the same as this angle that is from the law of reflection. And then also we are saying that this angle here is the same as this angle, but that is true on the fact that they are alternating angles. And then also we are saying that uh, this angle R is equal to the angle beta. Is that okay? And now if that is very true, we can now say if I is equal to R, alpha equal to R, beta equal to R, I think it will be very true that uh, angle alpha is equal to angle R, but angle R is same as angle beta, that means angle alpha is equal to angle beta. Okay? This angle now is the same as this angle. So I can now say, since the side MO is common, is common, is common to the two triangles, the two triangles, the M O I should change the name in here. Let me call this P so that I don't confuse it with the other one there. M O P since the side M P now. Let it be M P if I've changed the the, 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 the marking. M P is common to the two triangles M O P and 
and triangle M IP, comma, and the angles are the same. Comma, the two triangles are the same. Triangles are congruent with equivalent triangles, isn't it? So we are saying that by the fact that this triangle, if you look at these two triangles, this and this here, this angle is the same as this from what we have talked about here. Again, this side is the same. So don't you think that these two triangles are similar? Look at your mathematical analysis. That if this angle is the same as this angle, and this side is the same, they're sharing the same size here. These triangles are similar. Therefore, side OM is equal to side MI, where OM is object distance, object distance, and then MI is image. So we are saying that it's very true from what we have been doing thus, this distance OM is equal to MI. And don't forget, if this is our object, this one is acting as our object distance. And then this is our image, this is acting as our image distance. So if that is very true, that means that in a plane mirror, object distance is equal to the image distance. So you mark a conclusion. That in plane mirrors, in plane mirrors, object distance is equal to image distance. From our illustration, we have just tried to make here to bring a proof of how images are formed and what is very about it looking at all of this concept here is that okay so having looked at that let's now let's now look at uh, some simple idea after looking at how images are formed in the plane mirror having drawn the diagram showing formation of the images and looking at different different angles being similar, following different properties of the triangle, we did reach a point of saying that the object distance, the object distance is always equaling to the image distance in a plane mirror. So let that lead us to some other simple thing of looking at the properties of images formed in a plane mirror. That whenever an image is formed in a plane mirror, what do you think is very true about the image and the object? That is what we are going to share together with you. As you're also thinking about it, what is really very true whenever you are self, you go in a plane mirror, Stand there as you see yourself, you can get some of the things which are very true because you'll be seeing your image in the mirror. So, after seeing your image in the mirror, what do you think is very true? Properties of images formed. in a plane mirror. So, if I can ask, I told you, go stand in a plane mirror and then give us observation that is very true about your image that is formed in a plane mirror. Number one, what do you think is very true?
Number one is that what we have just derived behind here, the conclusion we made here, that the, the object distance is equal the object distance is equal to the image distance. Is that okay? That if you go in the mirror, the distance from you up to the mirror will be the distance from the mirror up to where your image is behind. Is that okay? So if you so happen to measure that by a proof here, we have seen that it's very true that in a plane mirror, always the object distance is the same as the image distance. Is that okay? And then number two, we can say that the object is always of the same size as the image. Is that okay? That if you go in a plane mirror and stand and you happen to see yourself, the real size you have as a person will be the same size that will appear in the plane mirror. Therefore, we say the size of the object will be the same as the size of the image that is formed in the plane mirror. Those are still the properties of the images formed. So, can we add any other? Another one could be the images formed are virtual. Is that it? The images formed are what? The images formed are virtual. Being virtual. That means that if you stand in the mirror and you happen to see your cells behind the mirror, even if you take a screen there, it will never be formed on the screen. Virtual images are images which cannot be formed on a screen because they are formed by apparent intersection of light rays. Is that okay? So they cannot be formed on a screen. Even if you put a skin there, you can see the image. You will never see the image. Therefore, they are virtual for play mirror and then next we can say the image is upright in the bracket erect is that okay so we are saying that the image formed the image formed in a plane mirror is always upright or what we are calling it erect what do we mean by upright that if you go standing in the mirror when you're looking at yourself you are on yourself your head will be up also when you're seeing in the mirror you'll see when your head is up it will not turn you up and down that now we need for you you're standing on your leg but when you see the mirror you see now the leg is up the head is down that one is not there it is upright in that your head which is up will remain up and the legs which are down will be down in the mirror. So vertically upright or erect means that. And then lastly, we can say the image formed is laterally inverted. Through 180. That the image that is formed in a plane mirror is turned through an angle of 180. In that, if you want to realize that, get yourself, if you have maybe say a word C, if you happen to see it through plane mirror, instead you'll see it facing this other direction. That's what we mean laterally inverted, turned through one. 80. What is on the right goes to the left, to the left goes to the right. If you have a letter E, if you see it through plane mirror, 
you will see it in, in steady in this format here. Is that okay? That is what we are calling lateral inversion. Okay? It is turned through 180. I've told you I've ever seen a scenario where you go in a saloon and then try lifting up your right hand. Instead, you'll see as if you're lifting the left. Is that okay? So it turns everything through 180. It reverses it. That is what we're meaning is lateral inverted images in a play mirror. So all those are properties of images formed in a plane mirror. Is that okay? So, having looked at that, let's also still look at something very simple after the property, after knowing that the images formed in a plane mirror have the same object distance and the image and object distance are the same. And then also having looked at the fact that the images and the object are always of the same size. And then after looking at that, the images formed are virtual and they are also upright and laterally inverted. Let's look at real and virtual images. Real and a virtual images. Real and virtual images. And then we can pick one, and we say let's look at real images. What are real images? If I can ask, what do we mean by the word real images? Real images are real image is an image formed by the actual intersection of light rays and can be formed on the screen. E.g. images formed in what? Formed by concave mirror as we're going to look at and maybe and convex lens. Is that it? So that is what we are calling real images. If I can make some simple sketch here for plain mirror, how do we get real images in a plain mirror? That is as a result of using a virtual object. This is my object. And this is my image. So we can only get real object, real images in a plane mirror when we're using virtual object. And now that is also which is something very hard to obtain. But if we are to get that, we we'll look at a virtual object. If you can obtain virtual object and then you use it to form real images in a plane mirror. In a plane mirror. So let's look at virtual images. Virtual images
we look at uh, virtual images. So, is an image one of the images are is an image formed formed by apparent intersection of light rays and cannot be formed on the on the screen. Virtual images is an image formed by the apparent section of light rays and cannot be formed on the screen. Ig Iggy Iggy Images formed by convex mirror to comma concave lens even the plane mirror itself from the virtual image. So we can now say how do we illustrate that I can have this I can have this if I have my object here if I have my object here I mean if I have my object here light rays will come will come here will come here reflected this other side reflect this other side but will appear to be coming from this side will appear to be coming from this side where the two meet that is where our image is formed where this is our object is that okay that is formation of uh, formation of a plane of formation of virtual image in a plane mirror so this is a real image using a virtual object but here we are looking at a virtual image using a real object is that okay so that is something to deal with in virtual images we said that virtual images virtual images are formed by intersection of uh, apparent intersection of uh, light rays. Imaginary this virtual one. Is that okay? When they intersect, they form virtual images. Is that okay? And it cannot be formed on uh, the screen. Cannot be formed on uh, the screen. So, having looked at uh, all this content, Let's now let's now pick up in the next video